Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of my aquaponic uh, garden. And actually, now I have a full working greenhouse, so I wanted to show you guys a long overdue video of what's been going on in here. It's quite quite busy in here, so I'll try to explain as much as possible. So we have six grow beds. Each grow bed is attached to a 55-gallon drum, one of those plastic drums. Um, I partially sunk them into the ground, ran uh, a 12-watt pump to each one, and this is the this is the water pipe that's pumping water to the bed. Nothing fancy, just want to get it to work. This bed is actually doing pretty nicely. It's been doing nice all winter long, actually. Um, we have uh, chives, red onions, uh, shallots. The uh, chocolate mint is coming up now. Uh, I'll probably move that once it starts getting going because I don't want to mint in my garden. It's going to be way too uh, prolific. It'll spread like mad. Of course, we got the oregano, creeping oregano. The thyme was gorgeous all winter long. And the kales, of course, they're fr pretty much frost resistant. Uh, I've got a few other things growing here, but I, I moved a lot of the stuff out to make room for some warmer crops. It's pretty much, uh, let's see what the temperature in this place is. It's uh, the water temperature is roughly 72 degrees. And uh, the air temperature is a lot warmer. It feels like 80s in here. So I'll explain this structure in a second, but uh, first let's check out the other beds. This is uh, another bed. These uh, plants are only a couple weeks old. I'm not really sure what they are. They might be cabbage. Um, there's plenty of, uh, as you can see, plenty of uh, red onions popping up all over the place. But uh, I guess we'll find out in a, in a couple more weeks what these things do, because uh, no clue yet. <laughs> and there's a lonely dill back here, if you could see this guy. So it's doing well. Of course, same kind of setup. The uh, pipe running to the bed, and um, it's constant flow, which means there's no. I decided to do away with the bell siphon. Bell siphon idea was okay. It's just it, it uh, added too much uh, possibility of failure. The I, I like. I much rather have the the constant flow. Some would say that it. You know, where's the oxygen? But believe it or not, I, I've had constant flows before, and they uh, and they do fine. I've uh, used some of the 55 steel drums for uh, carrying a lot of the wood, and uh, actually, I built this guy. This is my um, rocket heater. I got the plans online. Uh, I'll probably post in the video the link of where you could find the plans for this. It was fairly cheap. I believe it was uh, $35 for the plans. Um, the materials. I actually used regular old style bricks and some uh, high temperature mortar so it wasn't terribly expensive um, and it's pretty much done I just have to run the exhaust out somewhere uh, and it worked pretty good I mean there was uh, some it seems like there's a little smoky a little some holes I have to work that out but since it was such a warm winter I really didn't have to use it much um, so it worked out okay so here's my next bed this is a fairly new bed. I just got this bed up and running uh, a couple weeks ago. Already we have beautiful, uh, I think this is Lola Rosa, if I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A certain type of uh, very low-growing, ripply um, kind of lettuce. It grows a little bit reddish. Beautiful and delicious. I've already had a salad with it. And they seem to thrive nicely in this. We've got a bunch of little kales popping up and, of course, lots more... Uh, red onions, I planted those things everywhere. And uh, you'll find little Lola Rosas all over the place as well. I planted a few more different types of uh, lettuces such as romaine and uh, some other kinds of leaf lettuces and things and we'll see, they'll pop up shortly. And this is the barrel that goes that it goes to. Nothing fancy, it just cut a hole, put it on the side, sunk it into the ground. Hold on, let's see, uh, I'm filling a barrel up right now. And that looks like, uh, with the hose, and that looks like it's pretty much full. I'm going to move this over to something that can use a little bit more watering. And maybe this guy. Alright, this bed's actually not set up yet, um, surprisingly. I haven't, I don't have the plumbing set up. There's a, a rock underneath this that I need to get out. But, uh, even though there's no uh, plumbing set up to it, 
there's uh, the water drips down from the roof of the greenhouse and hits it and um, seems to get enough water that it keeps it wet and keeps it maintained. So I'll probably move those vegetables out of there soon. Here's my next bed. This guy has been going all winter long. This is a massive kale plant. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of kale. Very nutritious. I, uh, I eat lots of it. It's actually, it looks like it's going to seed finally. It took forever to do so. Um, got some other things growing here. I'm not sure what kind of uh, lettuces those are, but actually, you know, those might be red romaines. I'm not positive. So. Oh, I failed to mention that um, in each one of these beds, um, actually, I should say, in each one of these tanks, I don't have the fish in them yet because it was, uh, you know, even though it wasn't a cold winter, it was cold enough that I didn't want to put the fish in them to, you know, tempt fate. So what I've done is uh, I was using what's called bioponics. Bioponics is um, when you use um, biological fertilizer um, and, um, well, let's just say that you could use anything from... Um, wood ash and uh, urea to sea salt and fish em emuls uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it I think it's called emulsifier or emuls uh, emulsion but or and you could use other things as well things that are uh, organic and uh, won't hurt the uh, fish when you do put them in there so um, actually I, I plan to put the fish in, in the next couple days it's been so warm that I, I don't think there's a possibility of it getting down to the 30s again at least not for a long period of time so this is the greenhouse. Let me just back up a second and I'll show you how big it is. It's uh, 20 feet by 20 feet. Uh, I decided to go with a very tall greenhouse. Uh, as you can see, I, I uh, mounted a uh, fixture here just for uh, so I could see at night. And uh, eh, it's not a professional job, but it does the trick. I used uh, 11 mil uh, millimeter uh, thick um, uh, well, let me show you. It's easier that way. The, uh, this is 11 millimeters thick, very strong, very hard to damage it. You could scratch it all you want. It's not going anywhere. And uh, it was a little expensive, but it was from Canada. Well worth it. Uh, it's pretty much uh, not guaranteed to last a you know, tremendous amount of time, but it, it looks like it will. Let me just get There we go. All right. So that's about it for now. Let's see. The last bed I didn't show you really is uh, uh, also growing some lettuces. I've taken some cuttings of a uh, willow plant that I'm. Uh, it just goes crazy whenever you put cuttings in these kind of beds. And as you can see, there's tiny little uh, seedlings. Looks like some kind of lettuces. Not sure exactly what yet. And uh, so six six beds six tanks uh, each one is 55 gallons roughly so roughly uh, 300 gallons total give or take so that could hold a, quite a bit of fish um, I'm probably gonna go half and half so half with uh, fish half with um, just doing regular bioponics um, and see how they fare um, we'll, we'll see I'll keep you updated thanks for watching